There's a movie out now on Netflix called Churchill. That's a new movie that represents Churchill's role in the three days leading up to D-Day. And it makes a huge point of Churchill opposing the D-Day landing. It even has a scene where he's praying to the Lord for bad weather so the invasion doesn't happen. It says that he was haunted by the memory of his Galapagos invasion in World War I that resulted in huge loss of life, largely of Australian and New Zealand troops, and that haunted by this memory, he feared D-Day and tried to get it canceled. Uh, this is a misrepresentation of the facts, according to most major Churchill historians, a horrific misrepresentation. Uh, this movie uh, should not, should, should, if you see it, regard it as fiction. Churchill was, in 1942 and 43, generally opposed to a frontal invasion in France. He was haunted by the memory of the Galapagos landings in 1915, uh, which uh, wiped out huge numbers of people and, and was a total catastrophe and led to his dismissal as first sea lord. But by 1944, he had understood that we needed to invade France, was a willing participant, an active promoter of D-Day, very enthusiastic about it and very focused on it. Uh, and if anything, praying for good weather, not bad weather. It is true that when the United States entered the war in World War II, Churchill's concept was go into what he called the soft underbelly of Europe, invade, Italy, invade Sicily and Italy, invade the south of France, maybe move up through Greece and through the Balkans, and move into Europe that way, not confronting the main German divisions in France. His reasoning basically was cynical. He said that let Stalin and Hitler bleed each other to death while we watch, but make sure that Stalin doesn't take over Europe after the war because British and American forces would have come up from the south to occupy the territory as the Reich receded its control. But that geopolitical vision was in sharp contrast to what FDR wanted and what Eisenhower as the commander wanted. And Churchill eventually backed down and let D-Day go ahead with his enthusiastic support. As a result of his intervention, there was an invasion called Operation Anvil. The hammer was D-Day, this was the Anvil. That was an invasion essentially of the Riviera, the French Mediterranean coast that marched up through France. And there were some units, I think, that landed at Bordeaux in the west. And they occupied and liberated the bulk of the uh, southern part and central part of France while the Allies were hammering the German divisions back toward Paris and the German border in the north. Uh, so eventually his strategy was followed to some degree. That misrepresentation in this movie cries out for a battle. And I was crying out, rebutting it when I saw it. So I said, why not share it with you all in a history video? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Now, you know, if you like these daily lunch alerts, every day at four o'clock, I do a much more extended 40-minute presentation about the news of the day on Facebook. Uh, you can go to facebook.com slash deep six, the deep state. That's the name of the show. Deep Six, the number, The Deep State. So you go to facebook.com slash deep six, the deep state. And I can go into much more detail on these issues than I can in these lunch alerts. Thanks for watching.